webinar title, Operationalizing Data Quality and Reporting, CWIS Self-Assessment Tools. Webinar date, March 29, 2023. Children's Bureau Division of State Systems logo. Welcome to the Child Welfare Information Technology Systems Managers and Staff Webinar Series, brought to you on behalf of the Health and Human Services Administration for Children and Families, Children's Bureau. My name is Philip Breitenbusher, and I'm your host for today's webinar. Today's discussion is entitled Operationalizing Data Quality and Reporting C-Swiss Self-Assessment Tools. Slide title, participating in today's webinar. On-screen text demonstrating how to participate is explained by moderator. We highly encourage your participation throughout today's webinar. We hope that you're engaged throughout. And so um, there are a few different ways you're able to participate in the webinar. The first is that we encourage you to submit your questions throughout the webinar using the Q&A feature that should be located either at the top or the bottom of your screen in your floating ribbon, um, the icon should look something similar to the image that I have to the right of my screen. Uh, we do ask that you put your questions in the Q&A feature and not in the chat feature, um, just so that we can uh, ma maintain a record of all the questions that come in today. And we wanna be sure that we do respond to all of your questions. So please submit your questions throughout the presentation using the Q&A feature. Also, if you'd like to ask your question live, you may do that using the raise hand feature. And uh, we will chat with you privately to ensure you're ready to ask that question. And then we will unmute your line and call upon you to ask your question live. If you joined us by telephone, you can also uh, raise your hand using the star nine feature. And we will also be able to unmute your line that way. At the very conclusion of our webinar, uh, we would ask that you complete our satisfaction survey by clicking on the link and giving us your feedback. It's very important to us. We do use your feedback for planning future webinars and improving future webinars. So once again, uh, your engagement and participation in that survey was greatly appreciated. If there are questions that you have following today's webinar, you're also able to submit those either to your analyst or to cwis.questions at acf.hhs.gov. Slide title, agenda, on-screen text read by moderator. Okay, so here is an agenda for our discussion today. We will begin with welcoming remarks and an overview of today's learning objectives. We will then move to a quick review of technical bulletin or TB number seven and the self-assessment tools. Then we'll look at establishing evidence, data quality self-assessment and establishing the evidence for reporting self-assessment and then move to achieving results and conclude with questions and answers. Slide title, presenters, on-screen text read by moderator. Today's presenters are David Ayer. He's a Division of State Systems, Federal Contract Support. Welcome, David. We're glad you're here today. And Nicole harder Schaefer from the Division of State Systems. And Stephanie Sarber, also with the Division of State Systems. And once again, I am Phil Breitenbusher, and I am Federal Contract Support. Again, thank you and welcome to our presenters today. Slide title, audience poll, on-screen text read by moderator. Let's get started with our, for, our first poll for the day. So again, we ask for your participation and engagement with these. And our first poll is going to ask you this, what is your familiarity with the data quality and reporting self-assessment tools? You can just select one of these responses. I don't know where to find those tools. I'm somewhat familiar, I've perused them, I fully reviewed the tools, or I have used and or completed one or both of the tools. We'll give you just a few moments to respond. Um, and then we're gonna move on and we're gonna bring this the results up a little bit later today, a little later in the presentation. All right, looking good. It looks like we have almost a little over three quarters of you have already participated. Thank you so much for your engagement and participation. We appreciate that. Okay, we're going to allow you to continue responding to that question. Slide with text, welcoming remarks. As we begin to move forward, and it's really my pleasure today to welcome Stephanie. Good morning or afternoon, I guess, depending on where you're sitting today. 
Welcome and thank you for joining us in today's webinar. We have a lot of information for you today and we're trying to reduce our webinars down to one hour. So we would appreciate it if you would please let us know in your surveys um, if a shorter time is better for you or if you would prefer in the future longer webinars. Next slide, please. Slide title, Welcoming Remarks and Learning Objectives. Four on-screen learning objectives read by presenter. Welcoming Remarks and Learning Objectives. As mentioned in our January Open Conversation webinar, the Division of State Systems is focusing over the next year on data quality and reporting as part of our technical assistance and monitoring reviews. Today's learning objectives will be understanding data quality goals and reporting requirements, demonstrating how use of these CWIS self-assessment tools promotes strong performance in achieving positive outcomes, examining the intention behind the tools, how to use them and what constitutes strong evidence, and encouraging child welfare program and information technology team collaboration to reach data quality and reliable reporting goals. Next slide, please. Slide with text, quick review, technical bulletin, TB number seven, and the self-assessment tools. For the quick review, technical bulletin number seven and self-assessment tools, David's gonna go ahead and present. Thanks, Stephanie. Slide title, quick review, technical bulletin number seven. Two main bullets that read one. TB number seven describes the DSS approach to technical assistance, TA, to achieving CWIS compliance as states build technology that support their child welfare program and business needs, and two. TA is just the beginning of a journey that we take with states to build or transform IT systems using the latest technologies and self-assessment tools guide a path to CWIS compliance. Sub-bullets explained by presenter. Uh, hi all, um, technical bulletin number seven provides information about CWIS technical assistance, self-assessment tools, monitoring tools to help you achieve CWIS compliance. We believe you can more than meet compliance if you are passionate about building what you need to make use of the self-assessment tools along the way. And we'll very much appreciate your feedback as you use them. Uh, compliance is important. Who doesn't want a child welfare IT system that is efficient, economical, and effective? But on the way to compliance, you also want to uh, have the IT system you've built uh, support the services your agency offers and help children, youth, adults, and families reach their goals. So we will always advise first, build what you need to get the important work done. Uh, the tools cover the program areas that child welfare agencies are typically responsible for, such as intake, investigation, case management, foster care, adoption. Uh, several other tools address or support critical agency activities, and we will focus on two of those today data quality and reporting. Our approach to technical assistance is a journey that encompasses or encourages state capacity building and centers on the use of the self-assessment tools. They have practical benefits. First, uh, they encourage your agency to identify IT features, functions, tools that support your needs, the needs of your child welfare program. And second, they can be incorporated in your agency's ongoing project management practices. Using these tools along the way helps your agency achieve CWIS compliance while you build what you need. Uh, next slide, please. Slide title. Quick review using the self-assessment tools. On-screen text explained by presenter. Find the tools at www.acf.hhs.gov slash cb slash training dash technical dash assistance slash ccwis dash tb dash seven. Someone asked one of our analysts if they need to pay attention to the self-assessment tools if they are a transitional CWIS. That means they're shifting from their legacy system to a new CWIS. Another state asked if it makes sense to review these tools at the end of CWIS development. So based on our experience to date, we are finding that these tools should be used now, wherever you are at, whether your agency is at the beginning stages, ending phases or anywhere in between. Even if your state has been holding steady in maintenance and operations, use the tools because there's always an opportunity for improvement 
or new child welfare policies to address. Um, and when you're making updates at any point, review the tools as you prepare to go under the hood, as it were. You may find there is a, a self-assessment inspired improvement you can make that will boost automation, sharpen data quality, or enhance reporting. All these directly help the front line. And so we recommend that these self-assessment tools be used at all stages of the IT uh, life cycle. They provide good ideas for building a decent system and guide your IT systems to see with compliance. It's never too late to start. Finally, keep in mind that when we say build what you need, it also means improving what you've got, whether that's quickening the work of the front line, uh, enabling partners and clients to connect and share uh, important data they, or information they need, any improvements that help produce positive outcomes for all those served. Um, next slide, please. Slide title, quick review, using the self-assessment tools. Each self-assessment tool has a similar structure and includes the introduction, tool format, overview and background information, program goals that a CWIS supports, and resources and additional considerations. Design, reporting, and program error tools include foundational requirements, conditions to comply with CWIS. Program error tools include functional process factors and data elements. The self-assessment tools have a common structure. As outlined in this slide, there are sections that all tools have and then special sections that some of the tools have. I will make a, a few notes or comments about these. Among those sections that all self-assessment tools have, um, the overview, that's where you summarize information about the automated function or module that you're describing, such as users, interfaces, status updates, um, program goals, that's where you're summarizing the, uh, how CWIS supports core program goals or business needs for that module or function. Um, resources uh, and additional considerations. That contains many examples of external resources and best practices agencies may require to consider incorporating into their CWIS. Neither exhaustive nor required. These are, are suggestions for your agency to consider and you can add system features, automated functions, automated functions and considerations that have been helpful to you. These ideas may be helpful to others. In terms of design, reporting and program area tools, um, foundational requirements, these sections contain mandatory federal regulations applicable to CWIS, help to operationalize compliance requirements. And then in the program area tools, functional process factors. Um, those are useful features and processes that address typical program and user needs and were drawn from previous reviews to promote the successful implementation of program goals. Um, we encourage agencies to list their own based on local policies and needs. Finally, data elements contain examples of useful data elements to achieve an efficient economical and effective CWIS, data elements will evolve and agencies may include additional data elements to support their business needs. It's funny we should land here on data elements as we now dive into the data quality and reporting self-assessment tools. So next slide, please. Slide title, self-assessment tools, data quality and reporting. Main bullet reads, CWIS self-assessment tools for data quality and reporting. Sub bullets explained by presenter. So here's the basic idea or hope around data quality and reporting self-assessment tools, and it ties into build what you need. Uh, so IT supports program. IT systems help the front line to do its work and quality data are or should be the result. That's the progression we want. If built right, the IT system should help agency staff, not the other way around. The front line shouldn't be serving the IT system, right? So what's that mean? It means that the IT system helps the frontline staff, service partners, and families fulfill the basic child welfare mandates. And, and those are, and you're familiar, uh, working with families to meet the challenges of ensuring safety, preserving permanency through prevent, prevention efforts, achieving permanency after foster care, and promoting child and family well-being throughout. How does the IT system do this or help with this? Well, through um, smart workflows, real-time alerts, reminders, dashboards, reports, the challenge is to make the IT system a valuable partner 
in getting the program work done. As the work with children and families is undertaken by the frontline, we have an IT system successfully supporting that work. We should see data quality accumulating in that system. So data and reporting matter. If we have IT systems helping to fulfill the agency's program needs, then we have quality data. Then the agency can confidently account for its efforts. And we hope the reports will reflect that we are helping families to reach their goals. And that's what we want to have quality data, reliable reporting available at all levels, frontline, local, state, federal, to help us all see what's working, what's not, and to have discussions and make decisions about how best to improve. Um, next slide, please. Slide title, self-assessment tools. Triangle broken into three sections. Bottom section reads, program needs, with side bubble that reads, build what you need. Middle section reads, reporting, with side bubble that reads, policy practice, tell us what to report on service goals and family outcomes. Top section reads, data quality, with side bubble that reads, Program IT identify the right data to collect for reports. In uh, considering this visualization, let's start at the foundation and work our way up. Program needs drive the IT system, including the essential reports and dashboards that help the frontline get its work done. Reporting helps the agency describe or summarize the, uh, the achievement of agency service goals, as well as outcomes for children, youth, adults, and families uh, that we're serving. Report specifications, of course, will include data elements, and that brings us to the top, achieving data quality. Program and IT must continue working closely together to identify the right data to collect for these reports, as well as where, when, and how to collect the data in the system, and making use of the automated tools, features, and functions its IT arsenal has to achieve quality Data. The self-assessment tools help with many aspects of building what you need um, and serve as a guide for pro both program and, our t and IT. Uh, our hope for today is to shine a light on establishing evidence for the data quality and reporting self-assessment tools and how that will be useful to you. We believe the ongoing use of these tools will strengthen CWIS in supporting the frontline staff in the best ways modern information technology can deliver. And with that, um, we're going to go to the next slide, take a final look at the poll results, and move into evidence. Slide with text. Establishing evidence. Data quality self-assessment. Thank you so much, David. Yes, let's go ahead and uh, share the poll results now. So again, thank you so much. 82% of you participated in the poll, which we really appreciate. And it looks like from, again, the question was, what is your familiarity with the data quality and reporting self-assessment tools? 60% uh, of you said that you are at least somewhat familiar with the tools. And um, another 20% of you have either fully reviewed them and, and or have used them. Wonderful. Um, and 20% of you have uh, are not sure where to find those tools. We did drop a link to technical bulletin number seven or TB number seven in the chat. So you can grab it there. And from there, you should be able to navigate to some of the other tools as well. So again, thank you so much for participating in that poll. We want to encourage your questions. Again, you could submit those using the Q&A function um, in the ribbon uh, in your controls, either at the top of your screen or the bottom. And with that, it's really my pleasure now to introduce to you, Nicole. Slide title, Data Quality Self-Assessment, on-screen text read by presenter. David mentioned in Technical Bulletin 7, the Data Quality Self-Assessment tool can be found as Appendix G. So the Data Quality Self-Assessment tool is broken into the overview and background, this section allows the agency to document information about who uses the CWIS and the automation currently available in the system. Then it goes into basically the identification of the user community. So normally we would see the data governance structure that can be broken out into the roles and responsibilities and the data ownership by all the partners and establishing the prioritization for data quality. Then it is broken into the identification of data quality automation. 
So here you're going to give us a description of what automation or technology that is currently available to the agency to improve data quality in both planning and development. So next slide, please. Data quality goals. 45 CFR section 1355.52D. Three goals shown on screen. KB01, identification of data quality issues. KB03 and KB14, system prompts error messages. And KB05, standards protocol. Evidence that supports each goal is read by presenter. Data quality goals is the next section. So here, there are 15 data quality goals. We've broken this out into only six of them because as it was mentioned, we are shortening the webinar a bit. So the goal is KB01 for those who are following along. And that is the identification of the data quality issues. So the evidence that we would normally see to support this goal is your data quality plan. Your data quality plan should include the priorities, the metrics, the technical enhancements to improve timeliness, accuracy, completeness. The data quality plan should also include the CQI and the evidence that the plan is in active use. So the next goal is KB03 and KB14. This is for evidence, what we're looking for for system prompting and error messaging is system generates prompts and dashboards about upcoming visitations, court appearances, and you can send in screenshots. Um, also, the documentation that describes the error to the user and the link to fixing the error, as well as autosave to avoid errors. And with regard to identity and the fix of the root cause of the error. So for the next piece, KB05 standards and protocols, the evidence that we would normally see here is the project documentation, the testing routines, the impact analysis, the automated tools that identify system dependencies, documentation of your data governance protocols, requirements, standards for user interface, and identification of all of the contingencies that you're working with. So next slide, please. Slide title, data quality goals. Three goals shown on screen, KB09 and KB10. Data dictionary, data model, business rules. KB11, maximizing automation. And KB12, data sharing agreements. Evidence that supports each goal is read by presenter. So the goal for KB9 and KB10, the data dictionary and the data model and the business rules, <clears throat> you would have here your data dictionary and data dictionary should be easily updated and accessible for your data quality team, for your analysis, for court testimonies, data logic models, or relationship models, defining how data is reached in the system, person-centric, family-centric, you should have rationales for structure, as well as maximizing automation. So anything that you can do to support your users with regard to automation and making sure that you're able to assess the health of your program and the business process. So you would include workflows, online feedback, 
from the system that either I lets the user know that there is an error and it's real time and that it can be corrected and here's how you correct it. Reports that can be run by users daily for data quality routines or supervisors. The system can also provide information about trends in data errors. The next portion is data sharing agreements. So for evidence for data sharing agreements, we would normally see MOUs as well as these MOUs being defined and documented with regard to data exchange standards, documenting the data sharing agreements with the shared responsibilities so that they are accurate and complete and all of the user's roles and responsibilities and the accountability at the service program and agency levels that are needed. Next slide, please. Slide title, additional considerations. On-screen text read by presenter. So under data quality, additional considerations. There are several considerations and resources available to improve data quality, data quality characteristics specific to considerations concerning data accuracy, accessibility, completeness, timeliness, as well as security, the data governance models, specific considerations about practices, including the whole agency approach, all of the users coming together in your data governance and how all of your community of users participate. And we need to see the cross-functional representation of the partner relationships to understand how this is happening in your system with the focus on the data standards that address the key issues and establishing baselines for data challenges. In addition, being very thoughtful about system features that help promote, monitor, and measure data quality. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the automation component, it's so important to be able to measure the health of the program and the system by having measures already in place that can be automated. So next slide, please. Slide with text, establishing evidence, reporting self-assessment. And now I will be handing this off to Stephanie Sober. Thanks, Nicole. This is also a good time to remind everybody that at the end of the webinar, there is a satisfaction survey that will help us for future webinars. Um, and we would appreciate your feedback there. So even if you do have to sign off early, we should have a link in the chat so that you can access that um, uh, survey later on. Um, so the next slide, establishing evidence reporting uh, the self-assessment tool. Slide title, reporting self-assessment, on-screen text describing the overview and background explained by presenter. The reporting self-assessment tool is Appendix J on technical bulletin number seven, if you are following along or looking to access that. You will see and hear similarities in the data quality plan and reporting tools, self-assessment tools, which demonstrates how tightly they are linked. But before diving into the report self-assessment tool, it's important to note the definition that we're using for reports. Um, it's located under 45 CFR 1355-52C. And for the purpose of this tool includes, in addition to federal data submissions, any presentation of data to a user, including formats such as hard copy and online reports, graphs, spreadsheets, online dashboards, and data extracts provided to researchers and data analysts. Next. 
oh, I'm sorry, we're on the right slide. So um, the overview and background section is where the agency can document on the overall CWIS and its environment. The agency documents information, including the date of the self-assessment, the system and or modules included in the assessment, the status and target completion date. For the sake of time, we're gonna just look at a couple of the items under this section. So HA104 is a description of reporting environment, including report tools, reporting infrastructure and report archiving. The reporting self-assessment tool includes some examples of supporting documents that would be a common, in common assisting the agency in their descriptions. These supporting documents might include artifacts like overviews of reporting tools in a, the agency may be using, system architecture diagrams, and report inventories. When reviewing documentation, it's a really good opportunity for agencies to ensure documentation is up to date and accurate. Um, that's you know, not only for providing evidence, but for training staff as, as we're all seeing staff turnover throughout the country. Um, and so up-to-date documentation is, is really critical in that training. Looking at HA105, which calls for a description of the process for generating federal reports, the system providing the data, and any challenges in data collection. The focus for this item is on federal reports prepared and submitted by the agency, reports like APCARS, NCANS, NIDID, Form CB-496. There's, there's several federal reporting requirements. For each of the federal reports, the agency should describe a general high-level steps to generate the report, how the data is gathered, formatted, and submitted, and the systems providing the data for each report. For example, is the data coming from your CWIS, uh, a data warehouse, or an external system or systems? If multiple systems contribute to a data to the report, list all of the systems and any challenges in collecting report data from the different systems. Next slide, please. Slide title, Reporting Goals. 45 CFR section 1355.52 B and C. Three goals shown on screen. HB101, user access. HB104, support casework and supervision. And HB105, data analysis. Evidence that supports each goal is read by presenter. Reporting goals are under 45 CFR 1355-52 B and C. So in our um, team meetings here, we were recently reviewing the reporting self-assessment tool and drawing on our own experiences and recognizing that there are a lot of really great ideas for evidence out there. The examples provided within the self-assessment tools and even on this webinar are not all inclusive and should not be viewed as prescriptive requirements for every agency. They're intended to create discussion, creative opportunities, and to support states in identifying and working with what you have. If you have your own suggestions or experience with evidence for areas under discussion today, we welcome you to please add those ideas to, your, to the chat. Um, it's always great for states to hear from other states' evidence that they are using. Again, looking at just a few areas from the goals section of the reporting self-assessment tool, goal HB101 is user access. So some strong evidence would include different access for different user groups, reports are easy to access through single sign-on, and availability of public-facing reports. Evidence can typically be demonstrated with documents describing user access, report organization, report search tools, such as searching, filtering, and sorting reports, and user options to set selection criteria. Another goal in the tool is HB104, support casework and supervision. Evidence, reports are available real time with data needed to support casework and supervisors. For example, upcoming visitation, available services, um, et cetera. Staff are trained and know how to read and use the reports, 
and reports are able to be drilled down to case level specifics. Evidence is typically demonstrated with sample reports, screenshots of dashboards, and descriptions of functionality that enable users to generate reports tailored to specific tasks and clients. Some of the examples might include um, reports that provide information on upcoming visits, service availability, and assignments in real-time support, casework, and planning. Providing escalation reports supports supervision. Agency staff understand how to use reports in their work. Evidence of report training documentation might include differing training modalities, for example, written manuals, videos, and online help. And do staff know how to read and use the reports? Discuss how reports use, meet users' needs, and is the usefulness validated? For example, does the agency look at report utilization? Are there worker and superv dash supervisor dashboards or tools within the system that support casework and supervision, day-to-day -day case management, and do they automatically update when users satisfy the alerts or do they require manual cleanup? Looking at goal HB105 covers data analysis. Evidence looking at data analysis would explain how reports are used to evaluate programs and practices, define partner needs, and how data and reports are provided to meet those needs. For example, data exchanges, 4E data, and budget reports, and describe how data analysis is used in agency decisions or how it supports agency goals. This is typically demonstrated with sample reports and examples of data analysis using CWIS data to measure program priorities, such as effective resource allocation um, and emerging issues such as disproportionality in foster care. When discussing evidence, good questions to ask are how are the reports used to evaluate program and practices? Do all partners have the reports that they need? like for exchanges and in 4E and budget. What agency decisions or goals are supported? Next slide, please. Slide title, reporting, foundational requirements. Three requirements shown on screen. HB 202, federal audits. HB 203, state tribals reports. HB 204, report reliability. Evidence that supports each requirement is read by presenter. This slide covers reporting foundational requirements. Again, discussing just a few of the requirements identified in the reporting self-assessment tool. Looking at requirement HB202 is federal audits. What is evidence that supports the requirement? Some examples of this evidence uh, the agency might consider our reference documentation exists with listings of data elements to support each type of federal review. Audit findings are tracked to remediated and or resolved. Audit findings are considered by the agency data governance team. Ways the agency would typically demonstrate evidence would be with reference documentation, such as report inventories, catalogs, uh, listings of data elements to support each type of federal auditor review, such as Title IV reviews and the Child and Family Services review. So good discussions for the agency in identifying evidence would be who keeps track of reports needed to satisfy audit reviews and who person or team maybe is responsible for improving agency practice and reports when audit findings arise. Do audit findings get considered by the agency data governance team to consider for improvements? The next foundational requirement is HB203, state and tribal reports. What is some of the evidence to consider that supports this requirement? CWIS functionality has replaced the need and use of external systems. External data is interfaced into the CWIS and used in reports. User feedback is used to improve reports. Staff are using system reports to measure performance, support operations, and measure outcomes. 
Reports from the CUS support state or tribal child welfare laws, regulations, policies, practices, reporting requirements, audits, and reviews for program and services described in both Title IV-B and IV-E. So this is typically demonstrated with evidence that CWIS reports are meaningful and responsive to users' needs. Such evidence may be provided by CWIS statistics, such as report usage data or other pathways used to gather user feedback, like user meetings, survey data, and maybe focus groups. Areas of conversation to help the agency identify evidence might include does the agency help staff replace external data systems they use with CWIS-based solutions? What user feedback reports are used by the agency to improve the system? And are staff using system reports to be accountable for agency efforts? The third requirement that we have on here um, that we're focusing on today is HB204, which is report reliability and evidence that supports the requirement would include that agency staff have confidence in the report, reports are used to guide decision making and casework, and reports are used in reviews to measure the agency's accountability. Examples of reviews might include CQI, QA, payments, claims, and performance reviews. So evidence under this requirement is typically demonstrated with reference documentation such as the agency's data quality plan findings from CWIS biennial data quality reviews, supervisory reviews, CQI team reviews, report data usage, and other self-assessment tools. Report reliability is another area that relies on data being from the CWIS complete, timely, and accurate. Discussions to identify evidence in your state might include how does the agency ensure the CWIS reports are complete, accurate, and timely? Which reports establish the agency's accountability? CQI, QA, payments, claims? Does agency staff have confidence in the report and use the reports to guide decision-making and casework? And if so, how do we know? Next slide, please. Slide title, reporting. Additional considerations. Six considerations to improve agency reports are read and explained by presenter. So reporting additional considerations. The resources and additional considerations section contains examples of external resources and best practices agencies should consider incorporating in their CWIS design. These examples provided are not exhaustive and not required but they are a list of system features, automated functions, and industry standards, recommended practices that agencies may consider when building a CWIS. Agencies may add examples of best practice from their system, and they may wish to highlight those. So several considerations are included to improve agency reports, including the agency has documented comprehensive report requirements, the agency has an established process to manage and prioritize report requests. The agency has established and follows report testing procedures. The agency has developed report documentation standards and follows those standards. The agency provides training to support proper and effective report usage. And the agency fosters a culture that values high quality data and reliable reports to support work, decision making, and policy. I think that culture is an area to focus discussion on within your agency when it comes to data quality and reporting. How do you know um, if your agency culture values high quality data and reliable reports? Of course, it should be a given, but do you really? Um, how do you really assess if this is happening? Some ways to demonstrate that this type of culture exists in your agency might be that the agency leadership reinforces the importance of data quality by using CWIS reports to manage the program, guide policy, and provide evidence for budget requests. That staff understand the impact reliable data have upon outcomes. Staff are motivated to collect data quality data 
and agency staff like social workers, supervisors, and administrators have confidence that the reports accurately portray the program and activities, and ultimately that users trust CWIS generated performance measures. Next slide, please. Slide title, Achieving Results. Four bullets are read and explained by presenter. So achieving results, how do we continue to pro progress? So recognizing child welfare pro program and information technology teams are partners in achieving data quality and reliable reporting goals. Basically build what you need. Doing this right starts with how to support best and emerging practices. The CWIS must maintain CWIS data quality by, consisting, by consistently applying data quality processes and procedures to the CWIS data. Implementing strong data governance to support data quality standards helps an agency be accountable. CWIS data must be precisely defined relative to child welfare, and agencies must be able to monitor and analyze CWIS data. A good, reliable, and accessible data dictionary is a must. Assessing your data needs from the start, consistently applying data quality standards, and monitoring performance, operations, and outcomes through reliable reports. Technology provides opportunity to share data through automation and improve reporting to serve children, youth, and families. Quality data should be a byproduct of well-constructed IT system that helps the agency staff in doing their work. System users should be trained on how to use the system and the importance of quality data, and it should be less of a burden when you automate. Next slide, please. Slide title, questions and answers. On-screen text regarding how to submit questions is explained by moderator. Questions after webinar concludes should be emailed to ccwis.questions at acf.hhs.gov. This slide stays on screen for the remainder of the webinar. Phil, do we have any um, questions in the Q&A um, that we need to respond to? No, nope, we haven't received any questions yet, uh, although this is a good time to just remind our participants that you can submit your questions using the Q&A function at the top, and or you can raise your hand um, using the raise hand feature or star nine if you are on the phone, and we can call upon you to ask that question live. Um, we do have a few more moments here. We're doing really good on time. Um, did we have any uh, other comments that anyone wanted to make, any of our presenters today? I think that for me, um, you know, what we were trying to demonstrate today um, is, you know, how tightly data quality and reporting go hand in hand. And hopefully through the use of the tools, um, agencies will be able to um, identify ways that improve their program and improve, you know, how they provide services and are able to track the outcomes better um, for their services and for their communities. And really that's the goal of what these tools are. It's not just to satisfy a federal review, but really to support your program and to build the systems that you need um, in, your, in your communities and to support your program. Thank you, Stephanie, I appreciate that. And um, I wanna give an opportunity for Teresa Young to also uh, offer a few comments. Thanks, Bill. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate that the evidence that you're seeing today um, is is good and what we do consider strong evidence, but I just want to make sure that the states know that they have the prerogative, you know, to define their evidence. Um, I do think it's important to uh, think proactively and talk to your analyst about what evidence um, you're planning on uh, providing or using. And as the speaker said, what we really want to see is that there are ongoing methods that you have to assess your data quality, you know, on an ongoing basis, more so than, uh, you know, what you're sharing with us. Um, so I think that that point um, was made. And then I think the other thing we would love to see is in the request for proposals that are going out, we're really not seeing data quality or reporting 
um, or even the self-assessment tools, we see them mentioned, you know, on a high level. Um, but I think that we would love to see more specifics. So the kinds of information that we're sharing today with you are the kinds of information in some ways that you could even ask of your vendors when they're doing RFPs. You could be saying, you know, we need to be able to show X and this is the way we want to monitor it. So how, you know, would you propose or what methods are you going, you know, to put in place or features are you going to put in place to help us demonstrate compliance on an ongoing basis? So um, again, we are here to help. We are all learning, um, you know, through this. And so we really appreciate those of you who share your ideas and experiences with us. Um, but we really would like to see the uh, contracts and procurement documents with more emphasis uh, on data quality and reporting. So thank you, Phil. Yeah, wonderful. Um, we do have a question that's come in, uh, and I'll just throw it out to any of our presenters or panelists. Um, the question states, when evidence, uh, when evidence for a self-assessment criteria could be different, depending on what part of the project life cycle you're in, at what points do we need to make sure evidence is collected to validate criteria in the self-assessment tools? I can answer it if you'd like me to. Sure. Thank you. Um, you can. Um, you should use them, as, as David mentioned at the beginning of the um, presentation, you should be using them ongoing, you know, throughout the, the whole process in some ways. And ideally, it's not even so much the tools themselves, but the content in some ways that is that is on the tools. So, you know, if you have um, tools, you know, that would help you uh, provide data or information um, about the evidence and, you know, you collect that um, and it's automated and you just provide us, you know, with ongoing data that you're monitoring this, that you're aware of it and that you have activities or plans, you know, for addressing what you're finding, some of the issues that you're finding, that's really what, you know, we want to see. Um, and and the payoff in some ways of doing that is that the more proactive you are and the earlier that you do that, um, the idea is that the less you're going to have to do with compliance, because the more in some ways that you're showing your um, analyst that you're already, you know, addressing these issues or that you have, you know, you're providing information to your analyst. This is how we're meeting this. This is what we're doing, you know, here. or This is what we're planning and give us feedback as you're going along. Um, then what we want to do is be able to say, okay, this is taken care of, you know, we don't need to keep coming back, you know, on every single thing, especially if you are showing us that you are monitoring or measuring and making a, a difference for like, uh, related to whatever those issues are. So I think, you know, the, it's the content that's on the tools. It's a way to help the states sort of have uh, mechanisms and feedback uh, about the issues that should be hopefully important to you. And we tried very hard, you know, on these tools to understand, you know, what's important to the program and to families and children um, and other uh, folks, partners. Um, but, you know, we do recognize these are living tools. And as we said, we do want feedback. So obviously the more that we use them, they, they, you know, you all will be helping us, I guess, improve them, you know, as they're being used. And so this this year, we will be using these tools uh, for some states who are doing uh, self or um, technical assistance reviews on or with. Um, so definitely, when you are doing a TA review, I would say, you know, that at a at a minimum, you should have these tools. You know, you should be quite familiar, I guess, I would say, with the tools um, if you are getting ready to do any kind of review. But I wouldn't wait, you know, for them. I really would be using them now. And even if you are in the planning phase is the ideal time because you have the opportunity in some ways to really think about how you might want to incorporate some of these requirements in your RFP. Yeah, excellent. And I think that you may have just answered this, Teresa. Uh, but we had a question that come in to say, when do we show our analyst um, this evidence? Is it through the conversations that are ongoing or in a written format or both? It could be both. You know, I think you should talk to your analyst and you can ask for reviews. We, you know, we are like you, we don't have unlimited resources, but we do try to meet, you know, needs to be helpful when you are ready. You know, I, I know folks are kind of concerned about how much time and also um, 
you know, having the bandwidth to support some of these activities. So I do think we will be using them in calls. I think, you know, if you want to talk to your analysts and say, hey, can we go over this? Or I'd like to get some feedback on what you think about this evidence. Simply ask your analyst, you know, and or um, talk with them, you know, about what's your pre what works for your project and then what works for your analysts. Okay, excellent. Well, this is a, a good time to just remind our attendees that they can go ahead and continue to submit those questions to the Q&A feature. Um, and we'll try to respond to all of those. Thank you for those who have submitted questions so far. We hope we have been responsive to you. Um, also, I just want to remind everyone to please complete the evaluation survey um, or satisfaction survey by clicking on the link. Um, that's provided to you at the conclusion of today's uh, webinar. It's also in the chat. Um, you can find the link there. Um, we just really appreciate your feedback and hope to improve our future webinars based on your feedback. Also, any questions that were left out today and uh, we weren't able to respond to those or you have further questions following today's webinar, you can submit those also to your analyst or to cwis.questions at hcf excuse me, acf.hhs.gov. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Kim just put that survey link uh, in the chat so you can grab it there as well. All right, I'd like to turn it over to my panelists one more time for any final thoughts before we wrap up today's webinar. Thank you again for attending. And um, as, as Phil said, we do value and want your feedback. Uh, we want to make sure that we are using the best of your time. We had reduced these from 90 minutes because we were seeing a lot of drop off at the top of the hour. And so we are attempting to deliver information to you as efficiently as possible and using your time in the best way that we can. And so we appreciate your participation today. Any of my other panelists? Joining and if anything comes up as far as questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to answer them and go over these tools with you as you are progressing with your systems. Excellent. Well, let me uh, also thank our presenters once again. Uh, great job today. Thank you, Stephanie, David, and Nicole. Wonderful. And Teresa Young. Uh, Teresa, uh, thank you also for jumping in and speaking. We appreciate you. Uh, uh, always hearing from you is wonderful. Thanks to our, uh, again, thanks to all of our attendees. Thanks for the work you're doing on behalf of children and families. And um, with that, that'll conclude today's webinar. So thank you for being here.